Hey guys, Barrett here. Welcome back to another video. Today, we're talking about one of the most underrated shots in pickleball, in my opinion. I'm gonna explain to you why it's so underrated, why it's so important, and I'm gonna give you some tips and strategy on, strategies on how to handle it, okay? So, let's get started. Now, in my opinion, the most underrated shot in pickleball is actually the fourth shot. Now, it's just my opinion, but hopefully I'll be able to sort of convince you why. So we always talk about the third shot, right? We're talking about the third shot all the time. It's so important. It's the way that the serving team gets to the net. But here's the thing, is that these days, people are getting really good at the third shot. There is so many, there are so many great videos and articles and all sorts of content that teach people how to, how to do the third. But the thing is, is that now that people are really getting good at the third, well now, what's the response to that? The response is the fourth. And that's why I think it's so underrated. I see people making mistakes with the third shot all the time, or the fourth shot all the time. So today, that's what we're gonna talk about. Okay, so let me just kind of show you what it looks like here. Now I apologize in advance because my back is going to be facing you guys, but let me just kind of show you what, what this whole thing looks like here. I'm basically gonna feed my partner here some shots and she's gonna do the third shot and then I'm going to respond with the fourth, okay? So if she hits one over here, I'm gonna send one back and then she's gonna do her third. Okay, so this is kind of what the third and fourth dynamic looks like, right? Someone is at the net here, me doing the fourth shot, and then you have the person in the back of the court doing the third. Now in terms of strategy, the last thing you want to do is let the offensive player come to the net, right? Because remember that since they're the serving team, they're the one that's, that's doing the third shot drop, they are the ones that can score the point. So if you're in a neutral setting where all four players are at the net doing the dinking game, the serving team has an extreme advantage because they're the ones that, that can actually score a point. So the last thing you want is to let them come up, which leads to my first point you want to keep them back, okay? So we're just gonna start with that first. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a point A to point B kind of thing. The point A is where I am or where the ball is, and the point B is where they are. I have to judge that distance, and then I have to craft a shot based on what that distance is, okay? So let me show you. So if I feed a ball back here, she hits it over, that ball was too high. So now I can hit the shots back deep, okay? The point A was a high shot. The point B was the opponent all the way in the back of the court. So therefore, I can punch a shot all the way back to the back court. That's the fourth shot. Now, what if I were to instead dink the ball over? Let me show you. If I were to get one of these shots and I were to just dink it over, then what I'm doing is allowing my opponent to come forward more. And the more they come forward, the less likely I can hit a shot deep because they're closer to being able to volley the ball. And this is the big mistake that I see when it comes to the fourth shot, is that they, the person doing the fourth shot has a chance of either volleying or doing a nice ground stroke to the back, but they instead dink the ball over. And that's the big error. That's why this is so underrated. The last thing you wanna do is let your opponents come forward. Okay, so let me show you again. So here comes the return, third comes over. If I dink it like that, all that's going to do is allow her to come to the net. Instead, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to judge that ball and then send it back to the court. Yeah. So I'm just, all I'm doing is hitting the ball back to the back of the court like this. It's pretty simple. Obviously, when we're just doing drilling like that, it's not that simple. Okay, but that's the general idea. Now, the question is though, what happens when they start coming to the net? Let me show you. So if she keeps coming forward like this, then that's gonna make me more nervous as the player doing the fourth shot. Okay, the reason is, is because again, like I said earlier, when she's coming forward, I can't give her a nice lobby sort of shot like I was doing previously, because all that's gonna do is just open the open the floodgates for her to come in and volley the ball okay so you have to be very careful when it comes to this kind of stuff so notice how she maneuvered her way forward the last thing that i could do in that position was hit the ball hard because it was just too low 
on this side. Now, oftentimes these are going to be split second decisions, right? When the ball is coming over, you have to decide, is my opponent coming up too quickly? Is the ball high enough to where I can volley it? Do I need to dink it? What's going on here? And the way that you could think about it is in terms of, do I accept it or do, do, do I deny it, right? Is the third so good for my opponent that I have to accept the fact that it's good and I have to just dink it over? Or do I deny the third and say, no, I'm sorry, it's not quite good enough, I'm gonna keep you back. It's this constant sort of cat and mouse game, the fourth shot and the, and the third. And by the way, when I say fourth shot, I really mean like fourth, sixth, eighth, 10th, right? It keeps going. So when I'm sitting here doing these kinds of drills, I'm going to be saying to myself, should I accept the third and just dink it over because it's just too good? Or am I going to deny it and keep them back? I'm going to accept that third. That was too good. See, see how that works? And she knew that it was too good. That's why she came forward. She saw that my body language was coming back. It was just, it was too good, so I had to accept that and let her come forward. That's a part of the four shot, is you have to know when to sort of bite the bullet and realize that you're in a worse position. Deny. Perfect example there. It was just a little too high, so I volleyed it over. Oh, too good, too good. Now, whatever I'm making those kinds of shots, you heard me say that was too good, too good. I'm having to watch my opponent as well. That's a big part of the fourth shot. You gotta pay attention to what is going on with their body language. If they're coming up quickly, the last thing you can do is try to hit a ground stroke to the back of the court. Okay, I'm gonna show you from a different angle here. Watch how the ball bounces on this side. Watch how high the ball bounces. That's the key to understanding this. See how low that, that drop bounced right here? Because it was low, I couldn't hit the ball hard, okay? That is so important. You gotta have that patience. Oh, good shot. I had to concede that. It was too good. Had a little bit of top spin on it. It was landing near my feet. I didn't have time to really move back. Too good. You gotta learn when to concede, guys. Oh, good shot. <laughs> And this is kind of a third shot, third shot drop lesson as well. Yep. There's an example of denying the third. Yep. Another thing to remember is that typically if you're able to hit a nice little ground stroke with a lot of top spin back over, they're probably going to respond with a higher shot than usual. So get ready to really and then eventually smash it. Nice. Another thing that you can do is when it comes to the ball as it's coming over, you can watch the ball and watch your opponent at the same time. Really try to use that peripheral vision. Okay guys, so sort of a recap here. The four shot is so underrated because as time goes on, people are getting better and better at the third. And as people get better, again, as I said, the four shot becomes really, really important. So try to keep those things in mind. Keep in mind that it's a point A to point B kind of maneuver. How high is the ball on your side and where is your opponent? If you can think about those two things, you can then be able to craft a four shot that's going to be effective. And like, when you really understand that, when you really get it, it will, it will change your life, man, I promise. Change your pickleball life, at least. Guys, I hope that was helpful. Feel free to subscribe to the channel. I produce pickleball content. I'm releasing an episode every Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. I'm finally on a really good track here. So thanks for stopping by, guys. Really appreciate it. I'll see you next time.